Hey folks, I'm Dan. And I'm Jordan. And today we're showing you how to get started with the Attack on Titan release for the Metacross trading card game. So what we got here for you today is the Attack on Titan 2-player starter box. These starter decks retail for 30 bucks and allow you and a buddy to start playing full games of Metacross right out of the box using your favorite Attack on Titan characters. Inside this box you're going to find two 40 card decks, one of them based on the Scout Regiment, the other more of a blend of Scouts and Titans. In addition, there's a whopping 20 foil cards in here that are just foil versions of cards that you can get in the starter decks, as well as two playmats and a rulebook so you can learn the rules to the game. These decks include alternate art versions for all your battle cards and events. And you'll also be getting two copies of the starter exclusive, non-foil promo, Captain Levi, Humanity's Strongest Soldier. In the description below, we're going to put deck lists for the two 40 card decks, but keep in mind that the foils you get in every deck are random. Now like we said, these starter decks are actually ready to play right out of the box, so what we're going to do is take these decks and just play a few turns of a game with you guys to show you how it works. And if you have your own starter deck, feel free to follow along so you can get a better grasp of the rules. Let's get into it. Alright, so we have the contents of our starter deck box set up right here. We have the two playmats across from each other. We have our two decks, of course they are already shuffled so we're ready to begin the game, but do make sure you shuffle yours before you start. Um, on our playmat here, we have the zones we're going to need to know for this game. Character zone, where our characters are going to be played. The battle zone, where our characters are going to do battle. Discard pile, victory point pile, and our meta points area. And we have added some, you don't find these in the starters unfortunately, but some nice little coins that we're using to track our meta points at the playmat. So, uh, let's start playing and we'll just kind of show you guys a few turns as we go. So, to start the game, both players draw a five card hand from the top of their deck. Now, if you don't like your hand, you do have the option here of mulliganing, which would mean you're going to get rid of your hand to draw a new one. Um, and to do that, you just put your hand on the bottom of your deck and draw five new cards. So It is also good to note that before you look at your first hand, you need to decide which player will be going first. That's true, so just use a random method for that. Um, in this case, I'll just go first to show the game, so no problem. Um, I am okay with my hand. I'm going to keep it. Um, I think I will also keep my hand. Okay, great. So I'm going to start the first turn of the game now. There's three steps to the turn that you need to know. The first step is called the prep step. During the prep step, your characters will prep if they've been pushed, which in this game would be they would untap if they've been tapped. So for anyone familiar with uh, any other card games out there. Um, but your characters are going to be pushing to do various things. That's when they get prepped again. And then if you draw a card at the end of your prep step as well, but the player taking the first turn of the game does not do that. So in this case, I will not draw a card at the start of my turn. I'll move on to my planning step, the second step of your turn. During your planning step, you can play up to one character from your hand. You can play any number of events, and some characters have effects that you can use during your planning step. And in fact, I'm actually going to play one of those right now. So my character I'm going to play is going to be Hanji here. She has an MP value of plus one. Now all your characters are going to have some kind of MP value on them. Um, MP is your meta points and that's just a resource you're going to spend. It caps at 10 and you spend it to play various events and uh, often to use battle cards with stronger effects. Um, so she just gives me an MP of one, which is actually pretty low for a character. That means she must have a pretty good effect. Um, her effect is a circle, which means it's a push effect, and I can use it during a future turn in order to place a card from my hand at the bottom of my deck to draw two cards. Um, so that can be quite a strong effect, uh, but I cannot use it the turn she comes into play. So during my turn, I could also play a an event if I wanted to. I have none I'm going to play, so I'm going to move right to my battle step. And during your battle step, you can send your characters to attack your opponent, but they cannot attack the turn they come into play. So that's actually going to be the end of my turn. Jordan, go ahead. All right. Um, I will move to prep. I have no characters to prep, so I will just be drawing a card. Um, I, too, will be playing a character from my hand. I'll be playing Crawling Titan. He'll be giving me plus three MP. That's really good. And uh, he has a constant effect. 
My Titan characters may play any battle cards. So it's important to note that your characters also have some number of stats on them. They'll have anywhere from one to three different stats. The stats in the game are Strength, Intelligence, and Special. And in each of those stats, your character is going to have a rank, and that rank determines which battle cards you're able to play of those stats. Um, and so Crawling Titan's ability lets him get around that, and he can, his Titans can play any battle cards instead. Alright, and then I will move to battle step. He can't battle this turn, so I will pass turn to you. Okay, start of my turn, I'll prep my characters. I have nothing to prep, and I will draw a card. Alright, so now I'm going to play... It's only fitting that the commander of the scout regiment, Erwin, comes out. Plus two MP for that. Now, during my planning step, I have the option of using Hanji's ability to place a card from my hand on the bottom to draw two, but I'm actually going to choose not to because I am going to start attacking this turn instead. So I'm going to move to my battle step and I am going to declare my attacks. So in order to declare your attacks in this game, for each one, you choose a character who you want to attack with. That character has to be able to attack that turn, of course. Um, and you're going to push that character and place them in the battle zone. In addition, you also have to select a battle card that that character is capable of playing. So in this case, I am going to be using the Strength 2. The character has to have the rank of the battle card or higher in the stat of the battle card. So Hanji does have exactly strength too, so she's able to use this. This battle card gains me two MP, so it's gonna bring me up to five now. And it says, uh, has swords on it, which means it only works on, its effect only works on attack. It can be played either way. And says, you may KO a character you control outside of the battle zone to draw two cards. I really like Erwin. So I'm actually not going to do that. I'm just going to choose not to use the effect because it is a May effect. Okay. So that's all my attacks. And Jordan, you can now declare a defense if you'd like. All right. I will do just that. I'm going to have Crawling Titan crawl into the battle zone. And he will be defending with a Strength 6 card, costing 0 MP. It has the effect, until the end of turn, your Titan trait characters may play any Strength battle cards without paying their MP costs. So it's worth noting that when you declare a defense, your character does not push to do that. Um, and likewise, when your character attacks or defends, it always has to have a battle card to do that. It cannot attack or defend without playing a battle card. Um, so that's going to be all your defenses because I only declared one attack. So what happens now is that these two characters, they're, they're in combat, right? So they're actually going to hit each other with their attacks. And to represent that, we actually swap around the battle cards the characters are using and attach them to the other as damage. So in this case, Crawling Titan took the two strength as damage, Hanji took the six strength as damage, and now we're going to check to see if anyone was KO'd. So there's two things you're looking for here. Uh, the first one is called a technical knockout, or TKO, and for that one we're always watching how many stats a character has or how many colors are, are in their stat pool. So she has red and blue, strength and intelligence, and that's two different colors. So that means if she ever has any two colors attached to her, that's gonna KO her. Um, she only has one right now, so she's safe there. However, the other one we're looking at always is HP KO. And in that case, if the sum of the ranks of the battle cards attached to a character are ever equal to or higher, whatever rank is that character's highest, in this case, Hanji is a six, she's going to be KO'd. So in this case, she has a 6 attached to her. She's rank 6. That's all of her HP, and that will KO her. So we're going to place the battle cards that were attached to her in their owner's discard pile, and then discard her right here. And that was a very unfortunate attack for me, but I guess what do I expect for going against a Titan? So <laughs> go ahead, Jordan. It's now going to be your turn. All right, so now I will I have a character now, but he's already prepped, so I don't need to do anything there. I will draw my card. And then um, we will move to the planning step. I will then play Captain Levi. He'll net me 3 MP. And he has a when entering effect, which uh, until the end of my next turn, my scout regiment characters cannot be targeted. And they may link the turn they enter play and may link for 0 MP. It's a whole lot of effects. Indeed. And I will actually be using it. Um, we'll move to the battle step here. And 
I will be moving Crawling Titan up. He'll be pushing to attack. And I will lay special 7, costing me 3. Oof. Now you're able to play that, of course, because of Crawling Titan's effect. Yes. And then, because Captain Levi's effect, he is a scout regiment, so I may also link him the turn he entered, which is this turn, and I can link him at a cost of so, zero. So, Jordan, hold on now. What does linking mean? Linking is um, what you do if you want to do what's called a team attack. And I'll let you explain what that is. All right. So in this game, a lot of your attacking is going to be just attacking with your characters on their own. However, there's a special mechanic in the game called team attacking that allows you to send multiple characters in at the same time uh, as one attack. So in order to declare a team attack, first of all, you have to have two characters that are able to perform this. And Levi would not normally be able to, but because of his effect, he's able to link the turn he comes into play. So Crawling Titan is going to be the lead attacker, and you're going to push any linking characters and declare them linking with that uh, lead attacker in a team attack. Now normally you have to spend 5 MP for this, but once again because of Levi's effect he can do that by spending 0 MP. The advantage here is that this attack has a chance of scoring a victory point even if it's defended. Um, normally, uh, an attack will only score a victory point when it's undefended, but in this case, the team attack allows him that opportunity. So, we'll show you how that works here by uh, going ahead and uh, trying to defend that. So, Erwin is going to go ahead and try and block. He will hop into the battle zone, and he's just going to block with a special one, which gains me 3 MP when I play it, and has no effect. Um, and now, what will happen? Now, like you saw last turn, normally these characters would swap this damage, but because this is a team attack, first we're going to see if a victory point was still scored. So to do that, we're going to compare two values. On the attacking side, we compare the rank of the battle card that is being played, plus the rank of the linking characters in that same stat. Since this is a special 7, Levi's special of 6 gets added to it for a total of 13, which is very large for a team attack. We compare that to the defending character's battle card rank, which is unfortunately for me a 1, and the rank of the character using it in that stat, which for Erwin is just a 3 special. So you're comparing your 13 to my 4. Now my job as the defender is to beat your 13, and a 4 is not going to do it. So in this case we're just going to swap the damage like normal, but you're also going to be scoring a VP from the top of my deck. So, now we're going to check to see if anything is KO'd. Erwin has had a 7 special attached to him, and he's a max rank 7, so that is going to KO him. Crawling Titan has had a 2 strength and a 1 special. That's two different stats, but he has 3. And he, it's a sum of 3, but his, total, his highest is 6. So, he's not KO'd by either of those. And you scored a VP that turn. Jordan has made progress now towards winning the game. If he scores 7 victory points, he wins. Victory points are scored when attack is undefended, or, in this case of a team attack, when the defense is a lower value than the team attack's value. We're going to go on to my turn here. There is also a few other different combos or card effects that can also net you some free VPs along the way. Of course. The golden rule of a card game is the cards can always supersede the rules of the game. So, I will draw a card for my turn, and I will have a character to play, which is Elgin. He will gain me 3 MP when I play him, and he's got quite a wordy effect here, but it's actually, I don't think, going to come up too much uh, for the last couple of turns we're playing here, so we'll let you guys discover that as a surprise as you're reading through the card. Now, Jordan, um, I don't have anything else to do, so it's going to be your turn. Alright, beginning of my turn, I will prep all my characters, and then I will draw my card. We'll move to the planning step. Um, we're going to... Sure, right We're going to play a scout regiment dude here. He'll give me one. Uh, Berthold will give me a one entering effect if I control another scout regiment character, which I do. Captain Levi. Um, I'll gain one MP for each card in my hand to a maximum of five. So I have three. 
so I will gain three additional MP. Lots of MP. And now I'm going to use some of that MP by playing an event. I'll be playing rank and file. It's going to cost me two MP. And it lets me discard a card from my hand to draw the bottom two cards of my deck. So I will be discarding this strength of seven card. Events are one shot. Once you play it, it just goes to the discard pile. Then we will move to attacks, and I will. Yeah. We're gonna have Captain Levi come in. He's gonna swing at this right here. It's gonna cost me one MP, and on attack, which is when it's being used right now, I can shuffle a card from my hand into my deck to draw two cards. So we're gonna shuffle this event, or. It's just eight cards, so I don't have to reveal. You don't have to tell me, but thank you. And then we will shuffle that in. And then draw two cards off the top. Okay. Did you have any other attacks you'd like to declare? I do now. So now that I have a card that I just drew, I can now attack with Crawling Titan as well. Pushing him to attack. And he will play this int 3, which gives me plus 1. Now, normally he wouldn't be able to play it, but again, because of his ability, he's a titan, so he can play any battle card. Oh, man. And those will be all my attacks for this round. Should I block? I think I'm going to let those through. So in this case, I'm going to declare no defenses, and for each undefended attack, he's going to score a victory point from the top of my deck. So he's made a lot of progress towards that seven victory points to win. All right, I would move to my turn now at the end of your turn. I'll prep my characters, draw a card, and um, at this point, boy, I'm hurting. I need another character. You really got me early on. I think we're just going to have to call it for now. Um, but, uh, of course, normally you'd play out the full game and go to 7 BP. But, Jordan, you really did have a good lead on me. Now, I had some nice cards in here, jokes on you, that I could use to get some uh, battle cards back from the discard pile. My problem was, they were all attached to your Crawling Titan as damage. So, I really need to, I needed a way to try and kill him. So, uh, but perhaps if we kept playing, I'd find a way to pull that off and uh, be able to stabilize and come back into the game. But... You guys can have some uh, great games of your own if you pick up the starter deck and try it out. Um, and also, there's a lot of cool things you can pick up to sort of improve the experience. So why don't we move on to telling you what else you can do with the starter decks, and uh, we'll close out the video. Now, once you've played a few games with your starter decks and you're ready to go beyond the walls of this box, we've got a few recommendations for you to spice things up. One option to keep an eye out for are these demo decks, which are available from any local gaming store that carries Metacross and are completely free. These include 24 cards, some of which you can't find in the starter decks, and will allow you to add a little bit of variety to your decks. Another great way of expanding your options is by buying booster packs. You get 12 randomized cards in each pack with a chance of getting an ultra rare version of some of the most iconic characters. In addition to expanding your Attack on Titan collection, these booster packs will also allow you to cross over into other universes, such as Justice League and Green Lantern, with many more to come from your favorite anime, comics, and video games. Alright everyone, that's it for our look at the Attack on Titan 2-player starter box. And if you need more information on Metacross, check out the videos at the end of this one, and in the description below, we've got some links to some fantastic Metacross communities and resources. That's it for now. Take care, guys.